Good evening. Good to see everybody out. Good to see brother and sister Ramey. Good to see new faces and visitors. The house. Brother Glenn. Man, some beautiful people out there. Brother and sister Yoder. I better stop naming names. Someone's going to get offended that I forgot them. Brother Curtis and his wife. <laughs> you get called that all the time, don't you? And his wife. <laughs> Good to be into the house of God tonight. My goodness. What a week we have had so far. God has been so good. I say that a lot, but I'm telling you, I mean it when I say it, that God has been good. You would please stand. Grab your little book. I was thinking of just all that God has done. And I could just, I'd have to write it all down, and I couldn't write it all down, but I'd remember a lot more if I wrote it down before. But there's so much that God has done for us. But we're going to sing page seven, and it says, My heart was distressed neath Jehovah's dead frown, and lo, in the pit where my sins dragged me down, I cried to the Lord from the deep miry clay who tenderly brought me out to golden day. Are you thankful for salvation tonight? We were lost. We were ugly. We were dirty and filthy. We had no hope. We were, lost. we were so destitute. But God in his mercy sent his only begotten son to die on an old rugged cross just for me. While I was my worst, while I, we were all yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I'm so thankful for that tonight. I praise him. And I praise him for what he's done for me, how he's lifted me up, how he's encouraged me. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I'm his own. Praise the Lord. I hope you can say that tonight. Sing this page seven. He brought me out. My heart was distressed beneath Jehovah's dead frown And low in the pit where my sins dragged me down I cried to the Lord from the deep miry clay Who tenderly brought me out to golden day He brought me out of the miry clay He sets my feet on the rock to stay a song in my soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. He placed me upon the strong rock by his side. My steps were established and here I'll abide. No danger of falling, why here I remain. But stand by his grace until the crown I gain. And he brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He puts a song in my soul today. A song of praise, hallelujah. I like this verse. And he gave me a song, was a new song of praise. By day and by night, its sweet notes I will raise. My heart's overflowing, I'm happy and free. I'll praise my Redeemer who has rescued me. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. 
sound good tonight. Thank God for another opportunity to be in Father's house. We want to go to the Lord. I'll take your burdens by an upraised hand. I know everybody here has a burden of sorts. God knows. God understands. We also have several sick and afflicted. We did get a call this morning. Uh, Harry Chapman from Crozet. This is Brother Davis's son-in-law. They were here in the camp meeting this past July. Uh, Harry passed away this morning, so we want to remember uh, the family in prayer. Also, I understand Scott Carnes is in the hospital, has COVID, a uh, pretty serious condition. So we want to remember Scott. We want to remember Vicki Lu Vicky Lewis and Vicki Wolf in prayer. want to remember Helen Bechtel. I want to continue to pray for my wife, and then there's a whole host of other burdens. And along with all the physical needs, <clears throat> we want to be praying <clears throat> for the spiritual needs, and we want to continue to pray for the conditions that exist in our country. We are now starting to see things we thought we'd never see in America, but the Lord, he's on his throne, and we just keep our eyes on him, and he'll take us through. Amen. All right, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Bob if he'll come and word the prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, my God, we come before you one more time thanking you for your goodness and mercies and kindness to us, Father. For the day you saved our soul, Lord, and made us a new creature in Christ Jesus. Oh, old things passed away, and new things came into our heart, Lord. We thank you from the deep of our soul. My God, this evening, we thank you for every saint that's gathered in this evening, Lord. Somebody might say in their heart, what good am I here? Listen, we... We, each one of us, as we come, and our prayers and our presence creates a place, yeah. creates an environment where souls can be born into this, to the family of God. And, oh, Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. We thank you, Father, for the privilege to come here tonight. We thank you for all of these singers, Father, for the choir. My God, for the special singers, Lord, for every new person, everyone that's came in, Father, from other congregations. Lord, we thank you from the deep of our soul for them, Lord. Oh, God, because they're here to help us, Lord, 
to create that environment, God, where precious souls can be saved. Father in heaven, we ask you, God, tonight that you'll feed souls, Father. And then, Lord, you'll touch the heart of those that don't know you, God. You'll speak to them, Father, words of life and encouragement and understanding, Father. And be with our dear minister this evening, Lord, Brother Sizemore. We pray in Jesus' name you'll anoint him, God, with that spatial anointing, Father. My God, touch his lips, touch his mind. Bring to him, Lord, the things, Father, that we need to hear. My God, we pray that you'll bless each and every one, Father, that doesn't know you as a personal Savior, Father. If they be those here that are unsaved, may their hearts be encouraged, Lord. Oh, God, would you lay out before them, Father, a new life, God, that they can have and enjoy, Lord, we pray. Bless these requests that have been made. You heard, Father, each and every one, those that are sick and afflicted, Lord, homes where death has entered, Father. Lord, it's things that happen every day, God, but oh, Father, it hurts our heart when our friends, our close brothers and sisters are leave us, God, but Father, we know they have a better place. God, we pray this evening that you'll bless the singers, the special singers. God, help them, Father. My Lord, we give your name the honor, the glory, and the praise, Father, for everything that's said and done here this evening, Lord. And Father, don't forget to help the people that are here, Lord, from miles away. Take care of them on their way home, Father. Watch over each one. Keep them from harm and accident, Father. We ask these things all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
chat. You know, I hadn't been saved very long and was in the choir. Brother Sherman brought this song to me, asked me to sing it. And it's about a prodigal. Yes. And I was a prodigal. I, I was raised right, and I went into the pits of sin, into the pig pen of life. But I'm so thankful that I remembered where Father's house was. And when I came to myself, I knew I wasn't worthy to be anything for him. I wasn't worthy to work in his field, but I just wanted forgiveness. I wanted to ask him to take me back. You know, he didn't only take me back, but he washed me up. He gave me a ring on my finger. He gave me the best robe. He's given me blessings and blessings every single day. I have everything in my life that I ever asked him for when I was a kid. I don't deserve it, but I'm so thankful for it. Listen to the words of this song. You would grab your little book again, turn to page 74, we'll take the evening offering. Page 74, my heart is fixed on Jesus. My heart is 
is fixed on Jesus, the Son of all my thought. What wondrous work of grace his love within my soul hath wrought. He found me poor and helpless by every sin oppressed, and died that I might be redeemed and have eternal rest. My heart is fixed on Jesus, no other Without him life is vain His promises through all my days To comfort and sustain I love to hear him whisper Be not afraid, tis I As o'er the stormy sea I sail Beneath the clouded sky My heart is fixed on Jesus No other hope have I I could not live Since I to him belong For every day he gives me hope For every night a song Through trial and deep water His promises are sweet And sheltered neath his wings of love I find a safe retreat Oh, my heart is fixed on Jesus No other hope have I I could not live without him and without him dare not die. Amen. I believe uh, Michaela has a song for us tonight. Pray for her as she comes and sings. Um, I just want to say I'm thankful for all that God's done for me. Um, even when we go through hard times, it's easy to feel like God's not there. It's easy to look around and just be so confused and feel like, you know, he's not anywhere. He hasn't come through for you. But it's wonderful when he shows you all the things as you look back in life where he really has given you strength from day to day. And that your problems really don't seem so small anymore. So I'm thankful for that. For making the sun to shine, putting the stars in the sky, for flowers that bloom, the ocean so blue. Thank you. to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to Making me whole, saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for my home and family, for the choice that you've given me, the shoes on my feet, plenty to eat. Thank you. and pray for the freedoms that I have today. Sweet spirit, I feel 
Your presence so real. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for making me whole and saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for being a friend so dear. Giving my sad heart cheer for holding my hand when I could not stand. Thank you, Lord, for giving your life for me on that cross of Calvary for taking my place. Your mercy and grace, thank you, Lord. Sing this chorus with us. Sing I just it. want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. a song tonight. Well, bring it, brother. <laughs> Good to see and have brother and sister Ramey tonight. God bless him. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. My daughter and I are where God wants us right now, but I want you all to know we pine, as they say down the mountains, we pine to see you, to worship with you, to be able to show you how much we love you. And when I entered the sanctuary here, I didn't know if I wanted to hear my sister over here play the piano, hear the choir, hear Brother Bob pray. I wasn't sure, but then when I got here, I realized it's about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I'm telling you, folks, and listen, this is so true. I traveled for years as a preaching and singing evangelist in churches of God. Any place they'd let me tell them about Jesus, I'd stop. But there are some churches you can't find the Spirit of God with a search warrant. This is not one of them. This is not one of them. This is every time I come into this sanctuary, I cry. There's so much to be thankful for, but that sweetness that I feel is from the Holy Spirit. Whatever you're doing for my God, do a little bit more. But thank God, I have the victory today. I love to sing and tell people I've got the victory. I like to live the victory. So tonight, it seems appropriate, since I have victory over death, hell, and the grave, I'm going to sing victory in my Jesus. If you would, my brother. <laughs> The song 
Wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be unto God who giveth us the, who giveth the, well, I feel bad that half of you don't have it. Let's try it again. Thanks be unto God who giveth us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we thank God for the good singing. It's good to have our ministers. I know that uh, <clears throat> Justin made mention, but uh, Sister Jean McCulley's pastor is here and her husband, and we're glad to have them this evening. And good to see all the other ministers, Brother Yoder and Brother Curtis, Brother Glenn, our speaker, and Brother Tim Yoder. And I don't know if there's any others here tonight, but we're glad that you're here. So God bless you. Thank you for being with us. My privilege to introduce our speaker tonight. He hails from Means, Kentucky. He pastors the Church of God in Means, Kentucky. And he's just one of those down-home country speakers. And I'm telling you, you can't help but fall in love with him the minute that you meet him. He just has a wonderful gift. He has an excellent spirit. You couldn't even dislike the guy if you wanted to. 
So let's receive him with a good amen. amen. Brother Glenn Sizemore. Is that yeah. on? Am I on? Okay. Thank you, Brother Tony. One of the bad things about good introductions is you can't beat them. And it makes you look bad. It's good to be here tonight again at Newark, Ohio. It's good to be here with Brother Tony, and it's good to be with you. And uh, I am just an old country boy that loves to wallow in the Word. And uh, if you know what I'm talking about, that's what I love to do. And uh, driving quite a ways. But, you know, I was just thinking, there ain't nobody that drives any farther than, well, I don't guess he drives. Brother Nota, you don't drive, do you? You fly in here. All the way from New Mexico to come to church. Isn't that something? Folks, I'll tell you what, that, that's, that's what I call dedication. For him and his wife and the families here, and he has a whole pew full tonight. I want to try to do something. I said one of the callings of the ministers in this age in which we live is to try to wake up people for the needs that are around them, for what we must do. If we can just get the church awake, vibrant, Filled with the Spirit of God and have a desire to see lost souls saved. We can beat this. We can beat this without a doubt. I want to use a verse of Scripture in Genesis tonight, and then I'm going to go, uh, with the Lord's help, a little later on, I'm going to go over to Nehemiah to share. But I want to read a verse, chapter 3, verse 15. And I'm just going to read that one verse. You know the story as Satan had created his problems in the garden and had caused Eve and uh, Adam to fall. Sin introduced into our lives. And this is what the Lord said to him in verse 15. <clears throat> and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. It's going to stop right there. And let's reflect on all the trouble that Satan has caused us. <laughs> now I wonder... Who has caused Satan any problem? Who among us today has got Satan troubled? Yet who is troubled in their soul that they haven't caused him any trouble? When I was saved, I was saved in Dayton, Ohio. When I was working there and I... Didn't know anybody, and, and I, I hate to say this, but I didn't know anybody up there that went to church. I didn't run around with anybody that went to church. Didn't know anybody that went to church. And uh, after I became a Christian, and after I gotten saved and was back at Dayton, I had to try to figure out where I was going to go to church at. And the only person that we knew uh, was an aunt that went to church somewhere out in North Dayton. And I thought, well, I'll start out there and I'll go till I find a place. And I walked into the Ashcraft Road, First Church of God, and never left. I loved what I heard and I loved the preacher that stepped on my toes. And folks, I wasn't saved but about three or four months until I tried to get this in everybody. I had to go knocking on doors. I didn't know anybody in that community where I lived. And their church was on the other side of town. And I didn't figure too many people would drive there, but I had to do it. And I would get out and knock on doors, and I had no literature. <laughs> I had nothing. 
But I would just knock on the door and say, my name's Glenn Sizemore. I go to the Ashcraft Road First Church of God and I'm out inviting you to come to church with us. And uh, I was very worried, you know. I, I mean, I've, I've probably told this before, but I was scared, really, to be honest about it. I was scared of what people would do. And uh, knocked on that first door and I prayed, Lord, don't let them be home. <laughs> That's, I'm telling the truth, folks. I was so scared that I was praying, Lord, please don't let them be home. <laughs> But I'm going to use that a little bit later on in my thoughts tonight. But who has caused Satan any trouble? I wanted to cause him as many problems as he had caused me. I wonder if we have even gotten his attention with our work for the Lord Jesus Christ. Have we gotten his attention? You see, a Christian is not an average person. We can't win the world being average. And I wonder, we're not average, you see, but we are people that are waiting and ready to do the will of God. My friend, we have not fathomed the depth of Satan's hatred for Jesus Christ, for his church, and for you and I. We haven't even covered the surface. And then I don't think, I think there's something else, and I'll get to my thought just shortly, but... I think there's something else. I don't think we have fathomed how shallow our love for Christ is. I read about the apostles and, and they were ready to lay their life down at any moment. They was ready to forsake all. And it seems to me that we just give God our spare time. If I've got some spare time, I'll visit or I'll read my Bible or I'll do this or I will do that. But friend, there is no evil tonight that Satan will not do to keep a person out of church, out of heaven, and out of the will of God. I, I, I don't know, when, when, when God said enmity, when he said enmity, en, enmity here, he meant a hot hatred. He meant not a casual dislike, but a destructive, despising, irreconcilable difference. That there's no way there could be a treaty with Satan and Christ. No, seed, no, no treaty between the seed of Satan and the seed of, uh, of, of, the, the, uh, of the woman. And, and, and God meant for us to have a hatred for sin and a hatred for uh, the devil and what he's doing. And yet I see too many of our folk at church where I pastor willing to go to movies that are R-rated and still want to say they are a Christian. I, I, I've got people that want to, uh, um, I, I don't know, they, they just want a social drink and they want to do this and that. They don't have a hot hatred for Satan and what he's doing. And, and I, I would tonight that, that we would have that. <laughs> I wish that we hated Satan as much as Satan hates us. If we could just get that, he has shown his hatred for us far more than we have shown our hatred for him. And tonight, I, I, I want to share some things. And, 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 and really, I, I think the problem in, a, in, in our churches and in our world is the quality of our labor. 
It's not the best quality. We give him, like I said before, the spare time. But I, I want you to look for a minute, and I'm going to take a little bit here. I want to try to show you tonight how much Satan hates Christ and the, the, the quality of his labor to try to stop Jesus Christ. Satan is not trying to be just a little bit bad. He's trying to be mean and hateful and sinful, spiteful toward God. And the reason is, I think I believe he knows his time is short. But friend, if his time is short, isn't ours? Our time is short too. But ever since he heard those words in judgment that the seed of the woman would bruise his head, he went to war. He started trying to anticipate God's moves and, and having learned that the seed of the woman was destined to bruise his head, he began to anticipate what God would do so he could prevent Jesus Christ's entry into the world. I believe his first attempt was to, to stop Jesus Christ was that he got to watching Abel and thought how good Abel was and, and what a good person he was. And he thought, you know what, I bet that's the seed. And then he began to go to Cain and work up an anger in, Cain, in Cain's life about his brother. I can just see him saying to Cain, now, here you are, Cain. You're working every day in this field. You're tilling that soil and you're, you're, you're hoeing tomatoes and beans and potatoes. And, and look at Abel out there sitting on a rock playing a flute watching sheep. <laughs> He built an anger up in him until there was a jealousy in there. And he caused Cain to raise up and slay his brother. And Satan thought, man, I've stopped it. But it wasn't too long after that until he saw another son of Adam's and Eve's called Seth. <laughs> and Seth his name means the anointed or the, or the appointed or the substitute. And Satan saw that Seth began to bring forth men and women that would call upon the name of the Lord. And, and so Satan surmised, I have lost this battle. That wasn't uh, 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 Abel, but it's Seth. So he, he started to work on Seth and his family. And he saw that Seth had some good people that would call out upon God. And he looked over here and he saw Cain and had all of these wicked people. And, and, and he saw Cain's uh, 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 wicked daughters and he got them to marry Seth's good sons. I said, they was probably trashy dressed. <laughs> and they began to marry and they began to raise a family of evil, wicked people until the whole world was wicked so much that it repented God that he had made man. And Satan was no doubt thinking, boy, I've got it licked now. I've got everybody a sinner. And then along came Noah. <laughs> Oh, righteous Noah came through and he heard God telling Noah, build an ark. <laughs> he thought, man, I've lost again. <laughs> but he didn't stop. He kept on going. And it wasn't long until... <laughs> he heard... God tell Abraham that the seed would come through him. And the devil started another plan. Boy, he started working again. And he got over there and, and, and he, he saw the children of Israel that was down in Egypt and, and, and he said, you know what? I, I can get them down there. So he incited the Pharaoh to believe that those good people would rise up and take over Egypt and he had him to, to, to kill the the, the firstborn of the males and, and destroy them. <laughs> Thinking I'll stop the seed. But you know what? Along came Jochebed. 
And she saw her son was too good to let the world destroy. Parents, I wish tonight we would look at our children and say in our hearts, my child is too good to let the world destroy. I'm going to make sure they go to church. I'm going to make sure they say their prayers. I'm going to make sure that they serve God. Our children are too good to be destroyed by the devil. And I can just see as she put him in that little basket and that old Nile River and those crocodiles thinking they had a meal and God said, if, either, if you even look at him, I'll get you. And he floated right up to the king's palace. Now, brother, God is so much smarter than Satan. <laughs> He said, I'll show you, Satan. He said, the, the one's going to deliver my people. I'll have you to raise him. I'll have you to feed him. I'll have you to clothe him. I'll have you to educate him. And then he'll liberate the people. And he saw that he had failed as Moses was taking the children of Israel out of Egypt. But he didn't quit. You see, he had, I mean, you have to admire his quality of work. He, he never stopped there. And later on, he, 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 he listened and he heard God telling David, he heard God telling David that the seed would come through the tribe of Judah. And brother, he went to work again. And he began to divide the nation of Israel. And he had 10 tribes over here separated from Judah and, and, and his tribe. And he thought, you know what? We'll have a war here and I'll wipe Judah out and we'll get rid of him. Judah won. <laughs> Judah won the battle. And once again, Satan was licking his wounds, but he didn't give up his hatred. It was too angry. He was too angry. And, and folks, hang in here a little while. I'm talking about a loser. The devil is a loser. Satan is a loser. The world are losers. Amen. We're the winners tonight, but the devil is losing every time. Let's go over to the New Testament right fast. When the fullness of time had come, God sent in His Son, made of a woman, to redeem the human race, to destroy the works of Satan, to save souls like me and you. And when He brought Him in, Satan lost no time when he heard the wise men tell Herod, that the child was born. And he, he wanted to know who he was. And Herod wanted to, the wise men to tell him where he was at. So he could, he said, worship him, but he wanted to kill him. And, and the wise men, through a dream, left and went another way. And he didn't. So, so Satan incited Herod to kill all the males. So we can get rid of this child. We think it was Herod, but folks, that was the devil working through Herod. And they slew, slew all the men, but God was so much smarter. Joseph was already down in Egypt. <laughs> so Satan thought, maybe I've got him this time. I'd say we got him. And so he's leisurely doing his thing when he they come into to the Passover and Mary and Joseph left. <laughs> Hang in here with me, folks. I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited telling this story that you know. And, and they, they got excited when they found out that their son wasn't with them. So they went a day's ride back. And, and there he was in the temple asking questions and amazing the doctors and the lawyers and all of those things. And Satan heard him say, I must be about my father's business. <laughs> well, he didn't. He, he spotted him, but he couldn't handle him. Yeah. Wasn't long after that until he had, I think he's in the fourth chapter of Luke. They took Jesus out. He incited the, the, the Jews against him and, and, and they was going to take him out of the city and throw him over the bow of the hill there and kill him. But Jesus slipped away. And it wasn't long until Satan <laughs> was licking his wounds again. And I like that. 
And then he saw him when he was baptized and he went into the wilderness. Now listen, folks, this is why we can't quit. We've got to have this kind of, of, of work ethic if we're going to win the world back. He saw as Jesus went into the wilderness to worship and to get his plans from God. And when he come out, Satan met him on his return and trying to get him to do useless miracles and to, to abuse the work of God and the power of God. He tried to get him to turn rocks into bread and he tried to get him to jump off of the temple and, and float down to the ground so people would see him. And he even tried to get him to worship him by telling him he'd give him the world. <laughs> That's like me going over to Brother Tony's and look at his house over and saying, Brother Tony, I'll sell you this house. He already owned it. <laughs> He's trying to sell Jesus something he already owned. <laughs> trying to get him to do something. Jesus used the word on him. And you see, Satan lost again. <laughs> Satan Took another blow, but I'm telling you, friend, he wouldn't stop. It wasn't long until he's out on a boat with his disciples and Satan caused a tsunami to come up. <laughs> and Jesus just got up and calmed it and walked on it. Listen, if you got a problem tonight, I promise you, Jesus can walk on it if you let him. Your troubles is something Jesus can walk on. And he solve that problem and then he went on a little ways <laughs> and he saw that Jesus was going to not stop and he told Peter he said Peter maybe you can talk him out of going to the cross so he, he talked to Peter and, and he told Peter he said Peter go tell Jesus to not do this. And Peter's out there begging Jesus, don't go to the cross. Don't do that. Stay with us. And, and Jesus knew who was behind that. He knew that wasn't Peter really. He knew it was Satan because he looked at Peter and he said, get behind me, Satan. Now, we look at this and then I think one a couple more times and then I'll try to get to my thought for us. He did not want Jesus to go to the cross so bad that he thought, I believe this beating that Jesus took at Calvary or at the judgment hall, I believe that was the worst beating any man has ever taken in all of his life. I don't believe no man has ever had to suffer what he suffered in that beating. His skin tore from his body, his beard plucked from his face, and, and the crown of thorns shoved down on his head. And here he is, weak and weary. Satan trying to kill him before he got to the cross. <laughs> but Jesus picked it up and carried it as far as he could, and thank God for. Simeon, who picked it up and carried it the rest of the way. And then after they had him nailed to the cross, they had Jesus nailed to the cross. He thought, man, if I can just get him down from that. That was his last hope, I think. And he was saying, if I can just get him down from that cross. And he had people to abuse him and to ridicule him and, and, and to, to say, you saved others, save yourself. Come down from the cross. If you'll come down from the cross, you'll get saved. Jesus held true to the plan, my friend. Finally, an old Roman soldier said, I, he's had enough, fellas. And he took his sword and plunged it in his side, and Jesus cried out, it's finished, and gave up the ghost. Now, brother, they can say he's got to come back and finish it if they want to, but he already finished it. It's already a done deal. There ain't no coming back for another round. But yet he was there. And then he said, well, I'll just pin him in. Ain't that something? Trying to hold him in a tomb. But on that third day, my friend, he come out. <laughs> he come out. But you see, what I'm trying to tell you is Satan didn't quit 
after a couple losses in church, you and I had better get back to business of hating Satan with all of our hearts, with hating the sin that he is doing and, and to have a greater and more extreme hate for Satan than he has for us. This is our only hope. We'll never fight sin like we ought to until we hate Satan with a bitter passion. We have to hate what he's doing to our nation. We have to hate what he's doing to children in our nation. We have to hate what he's doing to our land and hate what he's doing to our families and our children. We've got to hate that with such a hatred that we're going to get out and win souls for the kingdom of God. When's the last time that we knocked on doors? Satan didn't quit after a couple losses. His hatred was too great. He refused to quit and he still ain't quit. But even though he knows his time is short, and I get so tired of saints quitting after one little defeat. They'll go out and invite a couple of people to church. I'll get people all excited about soul winning and they'll go out and, 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 and they'll knock on a couple doors and, and, and they don't ever show up to church and they quit. Brother, listen, knock on doors until eternity and try to get people to know Jesus Christ. And then they'll get mad. The saints of God, folks, it's going to take more than a, a somebody frowning at me or somebody not shaking my hand or somebody uh, not speaking to me to get me to lose the kingdom and to lose heaven. I'm going to fight him. I've had people... Quit while they're winning. And I think, my goodness. Now I want to take you to Nehemiah. I want to show you what a Christian needs to do. I want to show you what you and I, our task is. When I see what the apostles did in Acts, and I, I see Paul's, uh, 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 the way Paul uh, went about preaching the gospel wherever he went, and Peter and James and John and all of these, I begin to think, what little Glenn Sizemore is doing, is this going to be enough? Nehemiah wanted to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. He wanted to get his city back. And I look at Jerusalem as the church. and He wanted to get the wall built back. And he did, and he gathered the people together that was there after the king let him go. He gathered them together, and in the second chapter of Nehemiah, verse 17, I want to share with you. And he told the people, he said, Then said I unto them, You see the distress that we are in? You know, see the distress that they were in? Folks, can you not see the distress that we are in today? Can you not see everywhere we look the problems that we have and the distress around America with people afraid of this and they're afraid of that? Folks, listen, these bodies are going to go back to the dust sometime or another. I don't care what we say or what we do, but what we need to do is get as many souls saved as we can so when we stand before God, we have no gift to offer our Lord. He said, how Jerusalem lieth waste. And I think of our churches across America today. The one brother has already said, man, some of them, you couldn't find the Holy Spirit with a search warrant. They're laying waste. We got all of these buildings. A fellow told me one time when I was young in the ministry, he said, and when I was in Irving, and we had a church on every corner. He said, we got all of these churches. But he said, I can't see the church for the churches. All these churches, but nobody being saved. You see, Jeremiah said this in here. He said, the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, let us build up the wall. Come on, folks, let's build the church back up. Let's get it in our hearts and in our minds that we're not just going to come to church and listen. But we're going to do something with what we hear. You see, Satan don't care how good the preacher is. He and, and everywhere I go, folks, I brag on this church's singing. I think it's a, the landmark in the church of God. 
for the singers that you have and for the, the, the singing. No wonder Brother Tony preaches so good. But let's, let's, let's build it back up. Let's build the church back up. Let's, let's get out and win souls. And let's let Jesus Christ be number one in our lives. And when I was praying, I prayed, God help me that when I preach, I don't try to do something for myself, but I lift up Jesus Christ that people can see him. Then he said in verse 18, Then I told them that the hand of my God was good upon me. Folks, that's all I want in my ministry is the hand of God on me. Brother, if I get that, I'm ready to roll. There ain't nothing can stop me if I'm in the will of God. The safest place to live in this world is in God's will. And he went on to say, what's good upon me? And these were the king's word. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for a good work, to do this good work. Folks, we need to strengthen our hands and pray one for the other. We need to be praying that we can do this. But then Sanballat, boy, oh boy, here they come. Sanballat, the Heronite, and Tobiah, the servant, the Ammonite, and Geshem, the Arabian. Here they are, these three. (laughs) They wanted to know, what are you doing? What do you all think you're doing? And they said, we're building up the walls of Jericho. And, And he began to to laugh at him, and, and, and he said, I, I you know, I, I just think you all are crazy. Ain't that what they tell us sometimes? They told Brother Woosley one time, they said, Brother Woosley, you're just a fanatic. <laughs> he said, nah, he said, a fanatic is not a person that's got too much religion. A fanatic is a person that ain't got enough. Well, listen to me. Hey, have you got Satan's attention lately? He got Satan's attention in a hurry when he started working in the church. How many of us today has really can confirm that we have got Satan's attention? That he has spoke to us. Has he noticed you? Do you stand out in the crowd? What do you think you have to do to make Satan notice you? Who's making him nervous today? When we get up, what do we do? We notice all the Christians. We see all those that ain't doing what they're supposed to do, and we settle right in just like we're with them. Folks, it's time that we separated ourselves from the nominal Christian to be a Nehemiah in the work of God. One person can do a lot of things. I didn't know anybody when I went to Dayton, Ohio. And I, I went to Brother Collins after I had knocked on doors for a month or so. And I told Brother Collins, I said, Brother Collins, I'm knocking on doors and nobody ain't coming. Do you have any people in church that I can go visit that don't get to come to church anymore? He said, son, sit down. I'll make you out a list. And I would go and, and visit with them and I would witness with them and pray with them and, and, and they'd get excited about church that somebody loved them and somebody cared for them. And then from there, we started going out and getting the lost wherever they was at. We started a visitation committee. Every Thursday, brother, we would hit the hospitals. We would hit the homes and people would give us names. But well, how many people remember a sermon as long as they remember a grudge. <laughs> you know? And what sermon do we remember that changed our lives? What do we remember that changed our lives? Satan had, had seemingly, we, we just give him diplomatic community. <laughs> or immunity, not community. <laughs> He can do what he wants to. Go where he wants to. Nobody seems to stop him. And Nehemiah was ready to fight him, you see. And Sanballat was like many today. He tried to make himself look good by making Nehemiah look bad. Folks, don't worry about it when they talk about you like they do. Don't, don't, don't. Man, I'm going to heaven. If I've got a million dollars in my pocket and somebody with 10 cents is trying to ridicule me. (laughs) No. Not going to happen. I'm going to heaven. They are going to hell. Why should I, I shouldn't get mad at them or get afraid of them? I should be worried about them. And and I think you know here we are. 
He was ready to make fun of them and to joke them, to joke about them. And thought, making a name for us. I can just see him getting in front of people and, 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 and getting all of this thing, and he was getting a lot of publicity. Let me tell you something, folks. When the devil is insulting you, you he ain't getting the publicity. You are. He was building up Nehemiah when people saw that Nehemiah would stand against him and, and he was building him up. And you see, Nehemiah's attempt was not futile as he, he thought when he joked about it. Brother, when Nehemiah started doing something, they, got, they, they quit joking and got serious. When you get serious about God's work, Things will start happening in your life, in your home, in your community, and in your church, and in the lives of your friends. These are days, my friend. I, I think this is a year that, that, that we have to be great. This is a year for greatness. It's not a time, folks, for us to settle back and, and, and see what everybody else is doing. Sam Ballard had a bunch of his friends and they began devising a plan how to hinder his progress. And the devil has a plan. Brother, he, he, he has the children and, and they go to the ball games and they go to uh, the sporting events and they do this and do that on Sunday. He buys them, gives them a good job so they can buy them a boat. And the only time they can have time to run it is on Sunday. That's his plan. And they think they're being blessed. Folks, we have got to wake up. Man, I, I tell you, I come in so little. I, I was set, trying, to, trying to devise what to pray. Folks, it's hard for a, a person to find out exactly what he needs to preach anymore. I wanted, brother, I wanted to preach the mule walked on. But the thing about it is, this one here is the one that kept on my mind. We've got to wake up, church. We've got to get people that will go out. When, when man has gotten serious about doing God's will and the devil saw it, then the devil began to oppose him and God began to bless him. Now, I, I, I want to share this. You, many people are calling a blessing just a little thrill. As much as I love to hear Tony Bartley preach, as much as I love to hear this choir and these young people and, and these groups sing here at this church, you ain't really getting a blessing from it. You might get a little thrill and God may touch you, but my friend, the blessing is out there when you get a soul saved. I worked at that, and I'd leave church, and I'd go back to, to work, and I'd tell everybody, boy, I'll tell you what, I got so blessed at, 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 at church Sunday, and the singing was good, and the preaching was good, but by Tuesday, I had pretty much forgot what the sermon was. Actually, forgot what they sung. But one day, after I'd been saved about two or three months, I got to witness to a person and sit down with him and pray with him and win him to Christ. <laughs> Brother, I walked on a cloud for three months. <laughs> I didn't forget it too. I never forgot it. I still haven't forgot it. it was, that was what I call a blessing. I had the privilege of going to church in East Tennessee uh, after I had started preaching. And I'll tell you, I had some, some, some great people. David Watson and, and uh, Wayne Hafley and Bud Duncan and and all of those fellas, and, and uh, I'd get to preach with them and all of that. But we had a homecoming one time, and there was a lady there, and boy, them people down there, they say what they think. <laughs> this, la this group was singing, and, and this woman was sitting here, and she, she stood up, and she said, sing that verse again. I got a jolt. <laughs> An old fellow behind her said, if you're going to hold on, you'll get charged up. Folks, we need to get charged up about this business of winning souls. It's not funny anymore. It ain't funny how many people are ridiculing Jesus Christ. It ain't funny anymore how many people are talking bad about the church. 
It ain't funny how many people are, are, are doing everything they can to defy the church and burning the Bibles and all of this stuff. And Nehemiah began to obey God and something started to happen. Now, I ain't going to hold you much longer. Just hang in here. I've just tried to excite you about winning souls and bringing lost people to church. Something began to happen. Not, not that Jeremiah was getting blessed of God, but the enemies were getting nervous. Sanballat and Tobiah and Gershom, man, they were getting nervous because of what was happening in their life. They, they, they was losing this battle. Those walls are still going up. Those people are not discouraged. They are still building and they're still working and, and they laugh and they'd say, wow, that wall is so weak if a fox run across it, it'd fall. It never fell. Now, folks, the first, the enemy is set back and watch you. Then if he thinks you're getting a little serious, he'll, he'll kind of laugh at you a little bit. But he's not moved when you give instructions. Now, this is going to be my last line of thought today. Satan is not worried when you come to the altar and say, Lord, I'm going to start waning souls. I don't bother him that much. It's been done a thousand times. People will come to an altar and say, Lord, I'm going to do better. I, I, I'm, I'm going to do better, Lord. I, I'm, I'm going to straighten up my life and I'm going to do better and I'm going to do your work and I'm going to go to church. Satan don't care about that. You know what, he, what bothers him? It's when you start doing it. He don't mind us coming in here and telling how good a Christian we are and how great we are and how fine we are and how the Lord blesses us. He just don't want you telling it outside the building. And then when we do it, he starts getting nervous. A lot of people, we have heard the story. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Now, folks, the church of today, here's the problem with the church of today, is that we are coming to church as entertainment. Now, folks, this is not entertainment. I, I'm promising you. This is a Gilgal. You remember what Gilgal was to Joshua? Gilgal was a place when... The, the soldiers would go out to battle and they would battle and, and they would get weak and, 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 and they'd be hungry and thirsty and tired. They would come back to Gilgal and rest up and another bunch would go out. This is where we come to get fueled up, to go out there and, and spend that... that uh, we, a lot of us get a tank full and we want to set it in the garage. Don't use it. Go out there and win souls. You know, I've got so many friends that are lost, that appreciate me still for going and visiting them and telling them about Christ. And then I've got a lot of people that I have, I've been blessed to win to Christ. But church, we got to do this. Now I'm asking you in my way, and I know Brother Tony as, as a pastor, but I'm asking you as someone that loves you tonight and just starting out uh, my, my thoughts line here, I, I'm asking you tonight, get down to business with God. Let's take our work outside the building, okay? Let's do our friends, and we don't have to thump them over the head with the Bible. I would sit down with my friends, and I'd go into their house, and I'd sit down with them, and I'd talk with them, and, and I'd tell them, I'd say, listen, I wouldn't be here if I didn't love you, and I'm concerned about your soul. I don't want you to die and go to hell and burn forever. Might as well tell it, folks. That's what it is. And I'd say, I love you. I wish you would come to church. I would get, well, I'll go if he'll go. <laughs> well, I'll go if she'll go. And I'd think, well, hey, they're going to be at church. And I'd have prayer with them, and they wouldn't show up. I'd go back and remind them. But, folks, we can't quit. And you know what? After two or three months, guess who shows up? You see, you planted a seed, and this is my thought. <clears throat> I was, it was slick, and the roads were slick, and this guy had run off the road. 
and, a, and, and a, the road was blocked, and I was sitting there watching this fellow with a record. And, and he, he, he got that truck over there as close as he could, and he got this big old hook. And he started going down this hill. Boy, he was sliding down that hill, hanging onto the hook, and he got down there, and he messed around with that car for a while. Finally, he got that thing hooked. And then he come back up, and he started a motor on that wrecker, and he started pulling that car. I said, thank you, Lord. Mine and your job is to get a hook on them. <laughs> we get a hook in them and let God pull them. The man never pulled the car up. The record did. And if we'll witness to them, God will put a hook in them. If we'll talk to them in a loving way, God will put a hook in them. Folks, we can beat this thing. I'm telling you, church. And if we don't do it, it ain't going to be done. And I'm going to ask you tonight, will you sign up to win a soul? As our song leader comes and our musicians come, will you sign up to say, I'm not going to just come and pray about this. I'm going to take it outside. I'm going to take it to my friends that I love so much. And I'm going to share with them because, folks, if we're going to heaven, we can't be ashamed to tell our friends. I'm going to take it out there. And I know I was talking, we were talking to Brother Donald, and he, that, that plat around the church there at Ashcraft. We, I'll say one thing, they know the Moraine City First Church of God's there. <laughs> we get out and we knock on those doors and let people know that we're there. And folks, if you just realized how hardened people's hearts are, that they need something to soften them up, and only you and I can do it, more tragedy in their life while they're lost is just going to make them harder. But if you and I can come with the gospel, I'm telling you, we can soften up that hard heart. Amen. Would you sign up tonight to be a soul winner? Knock on doors if you have to, but witness to your family, witness to your friends, and tell them about the love of Jesus Christ by just showing them the cross. Stand with me tonight. Just, just be obedient to yourself. And folks, we need America has got to have a revival, and it has to start with the Christians. While we sing tonight, will you be obedient to the Holy Spirit if it's speaking to your heart? Page 444, please, in your big book. Page 444. To win these souls to Christ. Are we going to let him while we sing tonight? Wow, we rescue see. the perishing. Care for the dying. For the dying. Do you love your friends enough to tell them Snatch about Christ? Them Do you love them enough to keep them out of hell? Will you sign up to be what God wants you to be? I hope you already are, but if you're not, will you be a soul winner? It's serious business, folks. This is serious business. Satan is working hard to destroy your family. He's working hard to destroy our nation, and he's almost got it there. Are you satisfied that you have made the devil nervous? Are you satisfied that you make him tremble and you're scared? he's scared? Are you satisfied that your life is doing that? While we sing, will you pray for the tongue? Though they are sliding down, still he is waiting, waiting the penalty. We got to be about our father's business. Got to be about his business. Let's win Newark to the Lord. Will you do it? Will you help do it?
when this service started and we were singing, God has been good to me. A lot of hands were raised. And God has been good to us. We've got a roof over our head, clothes on our back, food in our refrigerator, cars to drive, warm houses to live in, reasonable health, reasonable strength. God has been good to me, we can all testify. What you gonna do with that goodness? What are you going to do with all the goodness that God has blessed us with? What are we going to do? Well, the most important thing that God wants us to do, and we're all falling short, is to win souls. That's the greatest thing. You, you say, well, I can never be a preacher, a teacher, or this, or a song leader, or whatever. The greatest thing any of us can do in view of what Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And when a sermon like this is preached, people just respond, well, you know, preacher, it's, it's not in my nature to praise the Lord. But if somebody could take a video of you during a football game, something got into your nature. Two things need to happen tonight. I'm challenged by the message. I've already made up my mind, and if I weren't up here, I'd be down there. First of all, we have to be available. All God wants you to do is be available. God, I want to be a soul winner. I don't do much, I come to church, I go home. You know, I'm kind of living in the shadows, but what can I do? Greatest thing that you can do is be a soul winner, by far. And the second thing that you need, you just have to ask God. God, inspire me. God, inspire me. And the Bible says, we have not because we ask not. And you've heard it a hundred times. If, if just half the people in this congregation could win one soul, churches would explode all over the country. And you know what is one of the biggest reasons why we ought to present our bodies a living sacrifice and ask God to help us win souls? You've heard me tell you half a dozen times. You see the ugliness and the hatred that Satan has for God's creation. He created us in the image, in the likeness of God. But have you noticed what people look like today? Have you noticed how people are acting today? Have you noticed how leaders are leading us today? Satan is beating the apex of his creation. God's creation. He's disfiguring us. You can see it in the market. You can see it in the mall. You can see it in the streets. 
Our kids are a lost generation. Mothers are a lost generation these days. And the more that we disfigure ourselves and the more hatred that comes out of us and all the divisiveness that's going on today and people just walking up in our cities and just hauling off and sucker punching some woman or some other race. All of that tells me, and I've called all my family, because I, I've asked many preachers, do you feel like the nearness of Christ is getting closer? And I called my family. And I've called 20 families in this congregation. I was glad to see 60% of them show up. Some have been in the revival every night, which I hadn't seen them for weeks or months. Just a little effort can make a difference. And I'm, I'd like to have a soul winning congregation. And you know, we've got excellent talent, singing, the preachers we bring in are phenomenal. Singers, the play, we, we've got something here to share with people who come in where they can make a comparison. My, let's not let that go to waste. Let's, un, let's knock on some hearts doors. And I'm gonna ask if you will while we sing one more verse. Why don't you accept the challenge? Come on down here and accept the challenge. And say, God, hmm? yes, yes. This is one of our new members. Came walking into the church. Um, yeah, I haven't been coming here too long, but I have been a Christian for quite a while. I got saved in the Wesleyan Church. I used to call Wesleyan there on... 21st Street, and, and I went to the Nazarene Church. But years ago, uh, at, at the Wesleyan Church, uh, the pastor, Billy Allen, some of you may remember him, he started a little uh, soul wedding thing, and I never heard of it before. It's called Evangelism Explosion, E.E. -E. And, and I was just a young man there, and I sang in the choir, and I was a... Sunday school superintendent, um, fill in, and uh, Sunday school teacher. And I'd done quite a bit, but I felt to get into that. And there was a small group of us that started studying the evangelism explosion. We would go out once a week or twice a week into the homes, and we would win, not every one of them, a lot of them we just, we, what, we just plant the seed and God provides the increase. What I'm telling you, um, this has always been on my heart. Now, I still do it, but mostly I just buy the I, I buy the tracks. They got such great tracks. You could, I've led people to the Lord just by these little tracks, reading them to them, or giving them. I buy them by the hundreds, and I pass them out. I, I ride on the bicycle trail. I pass them out. I've talked to people. I. I but what I'm trying to say is, yes, I was happy doing the other things. But when you're part of bringing somebody to the Lord, yeah. there is a blessing there that you, you can't touch. That's, that's the happiness there. And like I said, I still do it, but not as much as I had in the past. And I remember Billy Allen, he said, I was, I was on fire. And, and uh, he said, you know, I think you got saved through this. And maybe I did. I thought I was saved, but I think I got saved through that. But um, that's where you're, when you're following the Lord, his Holy Spirit, that's happiness. When you're doing that, I've never experienced that kind of hap happiness before in my life, leading people to Christ and and I was just talking to a 
man tonight today on the phone. He said, well, he, he said, I know we need to be soul winning in the church. We've got everything else. But yeah, but again, I'm getting older. I'm 68 now, but I still, I still want to be a part of it. And I, I, this could be the start of something here. So that's it. Nothing like it. That's it. How many want to accept the challenge tonight? Make yourself available. Ask God to help you win one soul. You win one soul, you'll get hungry for another. And then hungry for another. And God's given us a good watering hole. We don't have to be ashamed to bring friends, relatives into this church. Amen. They're what I carry with me. Oh, okay. Again, you're going to order them by the hundred. It's just all cool. Good. So come on. Let's have prayer before we go home and ask God to help us be with soul winners. Glenn preached a beautiful message. Satan's, Satan's out to get us. All right? Let's go on the offense. We've been on the defense most of our lives. Let's go on the offense tonight. God bless you as we sing. Come on. Anybody else? Would you bow your heads and we'll look to the Lord? Go ahead. Yeah, organize. And we'll look right into that too. All right. Would you bow your heads and we'll look to the Lord. Our Father, thank you. It's been good to be in Father's house. We thank you for the message, the messenger. And, oh, God, help us to take this message especially with us this evening. And before we bed down, talk to you about being soul winners. Lord, what can I do? What kind of contribution can I make to the kingdom of God? Lord, what will make you the most happy about my life? It has to be winning souls, church. It has to be winning souls, taking someone else with us to heaven. So, Father, we pray that you'll go with us and that you'll keep this on our hearts and minds. And, oh, God, give us opportunities, opportunities to just say a word, strike up a conversation, and be praying the whole time, oh, God, Give us opportunities that can fall out for your glory and your honor. Thank you for the service tonight in Jesus' name.